Hello and welcome everyone to the AfriCam show, brought to you by Explore.org. My name is Russell Gerber and great to have you with us again this year of 2022. But as always, such a pleasure to be back with all of you and uh, to see what exciting things we get on the cameras this year. We had such incredible things last year, of course, and uh, the New Year's brought us some fun new sightings as well, which we'll go through with you a little later on today during the show. Of course, we're with you for the next half an hour as we go through the live cameras and uh, see what we can find. And of course, a couple of those highlights, which we'll go through as well, and a quiz question for you too. But as always, feel free to send in your questions and let us know what's on your mind. If you have any questions about the animals or anything in the bush or things you've seen recently, do feel free to send those through to us. And we're starting off the show at the beautiful and wonderful TMB. Many of you I know some of your favorite cameras out there. I know that's often one that you all really enjoy. Watch this gorgeous Ellie bull. Having a dig around in the sand, of course. Very common to see these uh, dust baths. And I'm sure many of you would have noticed we have had not as much game around on the cameras in recent times. There's been amazing rain around in the region for the summer season so far over the Christmas holidays and the new year. And some areas of flooding in the internal parts of the country. So we've really been inundated with water thus far, which is really good news. Not so good for us because things get quite thick and we can't see through the bushes, of course, with the cameras as well as in the dry season. And of course many of the animals spread out into the other parts of the reserve. But let's head over to Cat Eye. Let's see what we've got hanging out at Cat Eye Pan. And We've got the cousin of our Tembi elephant. <laughs> Looks like another big bull elephant. Like this lovely low angle shot that we get at Cat Eye. You see this fellow having a little trunk full of grass as he munches away in the warm afternoons. Temperatures are pretty searing at the moment, around the 35 degrees Celsius in the afternoons is not uncommon, often breaching the 40 degrees Celsius mark as well. So though it is a time of plenty for many of the animals, Certainly the herbivores, and there's also a number of young lambs about, impala lambs and other young herbivores that have been born in the best time of year for grazing. Which of course in turn means there's great food around for the predators. And uh, one of our highlights today 
does come from a recent hunt that we caught on camera, which is not for sensitive viewers. If you're not too keen on seeing an animal being taken down by a big predator in Africa, I will let you know when we'll start the video. You can turn the sound off and turn away for a few moments if you're not keen, and I'll let you know as soon as it's over. But it is a remarkable sighting and something that is a part of nature, of course, and a part of life in Africa. But uh, as we've spoken about in the past, certainly not always easy to watch. But I'll let you know when we get around to that. Chaps just hiding behind the bushes for now. I tell you what, when we head over to Comfer's Dam, as this chap is playing a little hide and seek, looks like he's getting at the water from the other side there. And we've got a mongoose standing up on its hind legs. Looks like a yellow mongoose on the lookout for any potential. Predators and of course prey. And a quick hello to those of you out there. Lynn Short, welcome. Thank you for joining us. OMG23, thank you for your kind words. Happy New Year to you too. Hope you have a great 2022. And a hello to Nina from South Carolina as well. She's quite into her elephants. Me too, Nina. I think they're amazing animals to watch. But I like them all. The big mammals and the small mammals. <laughs> We're watching a little small mammal right now. And a net. Is beautiful and it sure beats my weather at minus 38. Annette, that sounds awful. I will take a warm plus 38 over that any day of the week. Though my wife is not too keen on the hot weather. We have just headed across now to, looks like, a lady. And we've hopped straight across to Rosie's where we've got a plethora of quelia. Looks to be red billed quelia. It's certainly the most common species in this area. And you often get them in these unbelievable flocks, sometimes in the thousands, which is pretty impressive. They are mainly seed eaters, but in hot afternoons like this, you often see them head down to the water and when they all go down for a drink, they head down at the same time and then fly straight back again to the same bush or perch. There they go. Everyone's brave enough for a drink now. Go, 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 go. Drink, 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 drink. And off they go again. <laughs> They're always fun to watch, the quelia. Nice to see them around. Looks like a sneaky little black crake under the log there as well. i tell you what, let's go into our first highlight of the day. As I said, we had some fun stuff over the holidays while we were away, and even, of course, in the last week or so. And the first, a rare sighting for us especially at this location, but an unbelievable sighting of cheetah. What well, looks to be two male cheetah. You can see the one in the background on the right-hand side of your picture now. Just on the edge of the picture, and then of course the other on the left. And uh, we had a chat to the reserve manager, Kel, who informed us that this is indeed two 
males, part of a coalition of males, which is fairly common to see. Often two individuals, not even necessarily related, once they leave their mothers, two young males, if they do come across another young male, they will often join up and form these coalitions, which allows them to be a little safer. Of course, safety in numbers it helps them in hunting as well, and of course, in claiming territories, which they will have to fight for. But an unbelievably great sighting. And they have been around for the last few days, so keep an eye out on those cameras around uh, the Rosie's the lady camera as well. You might see them again, but a really, really cool sighting. We're back live now at Comfers Dam, one of the most beautiful antelope species here in Africa. It's certainly one that prefers the drier environments, even though it's a little wetter now in the area that they're in. This is, of course, at Comfers Dam, right in the central part of South Africa. looks like a female. Both the males and females do have horns, but the male's horns tend to be a little shorter and a little more chunky at the base. And the ladies' ones are long and elegant. Look at that face. They really are gorgeous animals. I love watching Gemsbok or Oryx. Giving us a stare down. Maybe she didn't like me commenting on her horns. I'm sorry, madam. But why don't we head back over to Cat Eye and see what's happening with our Ellie. And there he is. He's come out from behind the bush. And a beautiful view <laughs> of an elephant mud bath. Really, really nice to see this. Let's just listen quietly for a moment. It's always such a pleasure to listen to the Ellie, Ellie's drinking at the water. So I'll give you just a moment. And, of course, as I say that, he stops drinking. But that is, of course, the nature of elephants. They don't follow direction really well. They tend to do as they please. But if you weighed six tons, you would probably do the same. You can see that glistening shine behind the ears. And they often spray water onto the back of their ears from their trunk like that. It helps them to cool down very large number of blood vessels near the surface of the skin behind the ears of elephants and that water helps them to cool down significantly well, what a cool sighting look at him <laughs> crossing his hind legs and they often do that you see them lifting one foot up, up off the ground sometimes as well which we don't really know why they do it sometimes they do it showing certain behaviors. Other times it's thought they do it simply to give their feet a break from that six tons. 
It's hard to say. But Ann Emerson asks, Hi, do cheetahs feed every day? And thank you for your question. It depends on the environment and availability of food, but in most cases they will not feed every day. Depending on the group as well. Often a female who has a number of cubs, sometimes they'll have three, four, five, even six cubs. And if they all survive to sub-adult stage, that's of course a lot of mouths to feed for the mom. And in that case she would hunt just about every day. But those two boys that we saw likely hunt every two or three days, depending on what they catch. Cheetah, of course, not very high up in the predator hierarchy, so they don't really tend to keep their kills for very long, especially if the what they take down makes a ruckus and attracts other big predators like lions or hyena, which will swiftly chase off the cheetah. So it really depends, but for the most part it will be two or three days between hunts. So I hope that answers your question, and Thank you for sending that through. We just crossed over to elephants. Looks like we've got a kudu in the background there. A female kudu, of course. Unlike the oryx, the females of kudus don't have horns, and the males do. And Cheese Please, hi Cheese Please, welcome back again, lovely to have you with us, asks, uh, does the Cheetah Coalition have a name? Um, as far as I know, not yet. Um, we only just re found out about this coalition, that they've come from the southern part of the reserve and are now hanging around where we do have the cameras, so hopefully we'll see some more of them, and maybe if we uh, get them a few times on camera, we can name them ourselves if they haven't been named just yet and we've got another beautiful elephant on the live cams but really lovely stuff on the cameras this afternoon giving us very little time to head across to our highlights. But as we watch another beautiful bull, Ellie, let's show you our second highlight of the day. This one from a little while back. And here we see very interesting <laughs> sighting of a beautiful water monitor with a giant dung beetle <laughs> in his mouth. Now, I thought this was a really great sighting. It's, I've never actually seen a water monitor do that before. They're renowned for taking on things like small rodents, often eggs as well. They are a renowned nest raider. The eggs of birds and of course even crocodile nests. But this monitor lizard decided this looked like a, a meal I'd be interested in. And dung beetles of course are fairly common sighting in the summertime. This water monitor was absolutely insistent on uh, on this meal. And generally, of course, beetles of this size, and certainly dung beetles, their main protection is they simply don't taste very good. And as you can see, that poor dung beetle just holding on for dear life for the time being. Butterfly in the foreground there. 
As I said, a very interesting sighting, something I hadn't seen before. It brings me to our quiz question for you today. Monitor. And ask a question about monitor lizards in general. A fairly easy one, but let's see what your thoughts are out there. What is the largest monitor lizard on the planet? What is the largest monitor lizard on the planet? So let me know your thoughts. We'll get to that in a few minutes towards the end of the show. And just a quick question from Carol Parker. You asked, how many years does it take to grow those tusks? Carol, very good question. Thank you for sending that through. Uh, elephants start showing their tusks at around two years old. You start seeing them protruding from the mouth. And the tusks actually then grow for the rest of their life um, until they either break, in which case they'll still keep growing, but of course will never reach the same length as they once were, and if elephants often do break their trunk, trunk, trunks, their tusks, from feeding or fighting, play fighting, etc. And they do wear them down, also using them for feeding, debarking trees. Let a big bull elephant like this one be around about 30 to 40 years old. So those tusks would have taken at least three decades, even four, to get to that length. And of course there are famously the great tuskers here in Africa, those big male elephants, mostly male elephants, who have huge tusks that often protrude all the way to the ground. And they've become more rare in modern times. We do see them fairly often at Tembi, which is another renowned area for tuskers in Africa. And there are some great tusker genes still flowing through that area. And let's head back to Kampfer's Dam. We had that beautiful Hemsbok, or Oryx, as we spoke about. And we were chatting a little earlier about how to tell the difference between the male and the female. UK David asks, is there an easy ID between male and female? Well, David, yeah, there is. The females tend to have a much longer and thinner horn. Quite elegant and very straight, whereas the males tend to have a much thicker horn at the base in particular and often not as long as the females. The reason for that, of course, is that they, the males use them for fighting, whereas the females at best would use them for defense if required. There is some record of Hemsbok using their horns to defend themselves if cornered. Of course, their main line of defense is to run away. But that is the best way to tell them apart from afar, David. You'd have to look at them next to each other, really, to tell the difference. Other than, of course, to look between the hind legs, <laughs> if you get the right angle. We've got our beautiful Ellie walking in front of the lodge. One of my favorite things to do in the lodge during the day. Often you have these beautiful, huge mammals coming around. And here you see this chap thinking about shaking the tree. They often do that to get fruits to drop. And they're very fond of doing it on marula trees. to 
see the animals all around the lodge. Let's head over to Naledi. Where we've got a gorgeous little breeding herd of elephants. It's really been a day for elephants today. And of course the breeding herds as we refer to them consist of the older females often dominated by a single matriarch and then of course made up of other adult females and the youngsters both males and females and once the males get to around their teenage years they will be sent off to fend for themselves just like those bulls that we saw earlier so those bulls will spend most of their life on their own and only rejoin those herds when they are looking to mate when they are females in heat and speaking of our wonderful elephants let's cut to our third highlight which a lot of you saw over the holidays one of our mischievous elephant friends decided to adjust our camera <laughs> which made for quite a bit of maintenance afterwards but it did make for a beautiful <laughs> sighting nonetheless and this was of course the camera at cat eye and for no particular reason we just decided to spin our camera testing its capabilities and a good advert for the toughness of our <laughs> cameras in the bush but look at that beautiful sight of the trunk. You can see all those little hairs along the trunk as well. And it is actually a very sensitive appendage. They can really pick up the slightest of movement and touch with their trunks and of course an incredibly dexterous appendage excellent for adjusting our cameras <laughs> as I say a really fun sighting nonetheless and we're back live now at early funds looks like our kudu hiding behind the fig trees We've got a couple of answers to our questions from Nancy, Anna as well, is sent through her answers. Looks like you two are on the ball. Andy FL2, also OMG23. Looks like the quiz question was way too easy today. Valerie Cash on the ball as well. I'll let you know in just a few minutes, but well done. Keep those answers coming in. As we zoom out at the beautiful and full Willy Funts River, those of you who've been with us in the last six months or so would know this river looked very different about two months ago, even less about a month ago. But now in full flow with the wonderful rains we've had all around the Kruger National Park or Greater Kruger National Park area, it's always wonderful to see. We've got one more highlight to show you today, folks, but I did warn you we had one that was not for sensitive viewers. And this was an incredible sighting of lions taking down a young zebra foal. So if you're not keen on looking at it, turn your volume down now, and you can maybe just minimize your screen. But for those of you who are keen, this was the amazing sighting of a lion hunt at Tau.
can see, unfortunately, a distraught mother in the background, but the young foal ran the wrong direction, straight at the two lines. Of course, you see that beautiful big male, female with him, and it's likely that they were a mating pair. And they took down what is very easy prey for them. A young zebra foal from this season, likely. And unfortunately, like many cats, even your house cats at home, it's not uncommon to see them playing with their food, especially when they know that it can't escape and is completely outmatched by their hunting prowess and power. And so you quite often see them playing with their food like this. And you can see now Blackback Jackal arriving on the scene as well. 20 potential leftovers. And that, of course, a pretty small meal for two adult lions. But it would certainly hold them over for a day or two, especially just for the two of them. But pretty gruesome to see. But incredible that we managed to catch it on the cameras. And another reminder of the amazing stuff that we do get out here in the wilds of Africa. So we're back live now. With our big Ellie Bull. And thank you so much to all of you for your questions today. And for those of you who also gave your answers to our quiz question, which was, of course, what is the largest monitor lizard on the planet? And many of you got the answers right. So well done for that. Of course, the largest monitor lizard on the planet is indeed the Komodo dragon. There are roughly 80 species of monitor lizard in the world, which is pretty impressive. In Southern Africa, we only have the two. And of course, the Komodo dragon, famously the biggest of them all. With the big adult male weighing in at roughly 100 kilograms, which is simply <laughs> remarkable. Now, monitor lizards down here in Africa don't reach nearly that size. But thank you so much, all of you, for your answers. A really knowledgeable crowd you are. And it's great to be back with you all. Hope you didn't miss us too much over the holidays but of course as usual we'll be back again every week same time and same place for the Africam show so please do join us again next week we'll have another half an hour of live action in the wilds here of Africa and I'll be around to take your questions and have a chat with you for a half an hour or so so wherever you are in the world thank you for joining us Great to be back. But unfortunately, for now, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you next week. Cheers for now.